Good evening and welcome to the November 13th meeting of the Board of Selectmen. It's November 13, 2019. Uh, call this meeting to order at 6.30. Seeing no public comment, we'll move into correspondence. Uh, I gave you some information that I had received uh, yesterday, actually, regarding state mandates on municipality actions in 2019 and 2018. It's a report by the Connecticut Advisory Commission on Intergovernmental Relations. Uh, and there's, uh, you know, there's interesting things uh, that are, are in it. Um, talks about the mandates and the effects on particular constituencies or whether it's towns or general state things. Uh, mandates specifically directed at municipalities. Mandates not directly, uh, specifically directed at municipalities and new state mandate reductions. Um, you know, I, won't, I won't go through them all, but some of the mandates are the, the Minimum Fair Wage Act, uh, a act concerning the inclusion of black and Latino studies in public school curriculum, uh, act considering, uh, concerning paid family and medical leave, uh, property tax abatement for certain first responders. That actually uh, was something that um, <coughs> Representative Zalotowski and I worked on together. Uh, and uh, we were able to get the state to raise the tax abatement ceiling for uh, firemen and ambulance, uh, ambulance, ambulance volunteers and fire volunteers to uh, from $1,000 to $1,500 worth of a tax abatement. Do you is that going to affect actually July 1st? Or yes. It's uh, coming to well, the no, first? actually, that's, that was October. <clears throat> so it'll be eligible for the, the upcoming tax year. Okay, so we, still, the have current to, tax we year. still have to do something in the way of our ordinances because it's covered by ordinances in our town. The uh, ordinance, uh, I'll double check, but if I remember correctly, the ordinance references the state statute. I think it spelled out the dollar. But just double check. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. So if that's the case, then we'll have to have a meeting to amend the ordinance. That would be something we could do at a regular uh, town meeting or right. you know, uh, several town meeting uh, opportunities prior to the beginning of July 1. Uh, I'll confirm this right to you too. And uh, anything from an act concerning, concerning uh, school climates to uh, a act concerning municipal and regional opportunities and efficiencies. Uh, I thought it was good reading and thought it was interesting to see and shared both years with you. So. Is there anything like land breaking or, you know, anything big in it that affects us dramatically or? No, I mean, it's, okay. yeah, it's uh, the, uh, the ones that, that I highlighted in 2019 were the ones I thought were significant. <coughs> Uh, I also received a, um, an email from uh, a woman who was concerned about, uh, it's right at the town line, actually the area that she's talking about is actually in Suffield, and it's uh, it, on, you, when you take Route 187 North and uh, you, uh, you, as you're bearing to the right over where Sheldon Farm is, uh, and if you go straight, you're taking the back way into Feeding Hills, and eventually Feeding Hills, it goes through Suffield. Um, she was concerned about, uh, uh, about the signage there, and so she contacted the state, and the state said, you're right, it's a state highway, but you know, we would need the local traffic authority, which would be myself in this case, uh, to you know, tell us that they wanted us to do a study. So I did tell them that we wanted them to do a study. Um, to see if uh, you know if there's any additional signage uh, or something that can make it a little safer. Uh, simultaneous to this, the uh, the Southfield and East Granby work together and it, it, you know put a couple signs up to clarify things. Uh, so we'll see what the state says. The state said they would uh, they they would start a study on this and let us know what their verdict is. 
<laughs> and that usually takes five or six years. Five or six years, five or six months for that to yeah. happen. Yeah, I can see that because I've taken this road before, but usually there's nobody right. else there. But, yeah, but yeah, the, the uh, doesn't doesn't tell you who has the right of way. Right, and our, and one of the complaints that people had prior to this was the uh, was was uh, you know they were actually going down Stone Road, and the GPS was making them turn around and come back. And they didn't necessarily need to do that. So we, you know, with Suffield, uh, put the sign up saying where Stone Road was and where 187 continued. So we'll, go, we'll find out what they say. Seems a little bit more treacherous, too, for people who don't travel that frequently or from out of state or whatever. First time you hit that, you're not quite sure what's going on. I agree. The, uh, I also included the, the um, September and October uh, police blotter. Um, year to date, we've had 11,281 calls for service. There's been 104 accidents to date in town. Uh, 600 tickets have been written. Uh, there was 362 medical calls. Uh, and that's year. That's all year to date. Uh, and uh, in September, October, there were four burglaries. There was three stolen vehicles, all with their keys in the car. Um, there was two assaults, one DUI and one missing parent person. And coincident, not coincidentally, the arrest was for the person that was under the influence. So that's some of the activity. And then uh, the results of the election. Uh, congratulations to John. Congratulations to John uh, for being, uh, along with myself, re elected to the Board of State. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, the next piece of correspondence is several pages from the tax collector. Uh, the uh, uh, first sheet, if I did them in order, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, is shows that back taxes have increased. Uh, the getting the back taxes is is uh, is 29 percent ahead of uh, what it was last year at this time, which is good. Um, and that's because of the tax sale that happened. Uh, the uh, if you flip through to 61.42 percent has been uh, collected uh, to date. Of the grand list, you know, there will be the January grand list uh, or the six month payment. So 61% is actually um, three quarters of a percent ahead of where we were last year. Last year we ended up at 98.9% uh, collection rate. Uh, the Board of Finance uses 98% uh, as the budget, and uh, we're turning uh, towards. Uh, uh, close to, if not 99%, so that's all good. The uh, reason why I put in the uh, non-criminal uh, justice agency mandatory training is that it was something that Nicole and I wanted regarding the uh, uh, handling of fingerprints and the systems that you have, that have to have in place. Um, because it's all confidential information. Uh, some of it is confidential information. So we went for our mandatory training. Uh, the other reason I, I brought it up, uh, since she and I are the ones that handled the, uh, the pistol permits, um, the other thing is, is within a year, there's going to be a year, year and a half, there'll be a new electronic system that the state's going to be putting in that uh, will make the uh, it uh, quicker to be able to process the paperwork specifically for pistol permits. Uh, right now, they're behind. Uh, they're probably running about a four-month lag time. Um, um, it takes four months to get a permit now? Uh, it uh, was down to four to six weeks, and it's up to three to four months right now because they're, they've got a log jam with fingerprints. Uh, and uh, uh, this new system will alleviate that so that there won't be any issues. Uh, they expect to have that back down to traditional levels prior to a year and a half from now, but it should make things more efficient. Now, the fingerprints aren't done here. They're done at the police station, isn't that correct? That That's is correct. Was. Okay. So you don't physically handle the prints that they do? You don't want me to physically right. handle the prints. The uh, black stuff all over your hands. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, 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 the police department uh, handles it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, 
inefficiency with the paper system, especially when they're doing the, uh, the thumb roll and the finger roll uh, on the fingerprint page. Uh, eventually, the system will have several regional areas where you will go get your fingerprints done electronically, and then um, I mean, that just makes it so much more efficient and easier for them to check. So it'll be a good system. Um, let's see. The um, at this point, uh, I uh, am working with Cirque uh, for the, our EDC officer to replace Kevin. Uh, we haven't uh, got a candidate as of yet, uh, and Courtney owes me a phone call to explain to me where they are in the process. Um, the, uh, after that, we have the uh, Department of Public Health uh, talks about 38 vaping-related injury, uh, vaping related lung injury cases uh, reported in Connecticut. Uh, it seems to be a real big issue. Something that I saw a statistic yesterday was that 25% of all high schoolers are vaping, and you know, that just seems like a pretty high number. Uh, and you know, I mean, that not that many smoke cigarettes. Vaping is just so much easier, and could, if you've got nicotine in the charge, um, it's very addictive. So there's a lot of health concerns right now regarding vaping. At the uh, Farmington Valley Health District board meeting yesterday, we talked about that. And a couple of things that they mentioned. One was that the young people using this are having a very difficult time putting it down. And uh, the addictive qualities of it make it very difficult. And they're trying to explore other things because just say no or just stop isn't going to work. The other thing was that, uh, that it was perceived at one point as though uh, there weren't a lot of health issues with it. In fact, it was perceived that it was probably a better alternative to smoking. And because there was no tar in it. And <clears throat> right. And now it seems to be uh, just a serious, so there's definitely a lot of concern with it. The next piece of correspondence is uh, from uh, that I inserted was a, a first page of a PowerPoint from uh, Hartford Foundation. Uh, seven members of these community uh, attended uh, the community kickoff uh, for the Hartford Foundation with the ultimate goal of coming up with a, a group of, of uh, individuals. Uh, it's not town related, it will be a group of, of uh, civilian uh, East Gravity residents who will um, uh, determine uh, what uh, the $50,000 would be spent on. Uh, there's a $50,000 grant. There's another $50,000 grant that will be used uh, as like an annuity. So every year there'll be you know, seven hundred fifty or thousand dollars, depending on what the return is. Um, so it's a hundred thousand dollar total, fifty thousand, which is one lump sum, and fifty thousand dollars, which is in the form of. Of, uh, I'm saying the uh, what's the other actual best matter? Um, the well, it, it's it's an it, it's an annuity where you you get X amount of dollars every year. There's a charitable term that is used that is escaping me at this point. So the um, so anyways, uh, there was uh, uh, as a town official uh, and Joe had volunteered to attend and did attend the meeting. Uh, as as uh, officials were not eligible, but I any time that you have an opportunity for a hundred thousand dollar investment uh, from an agency, uh, you know, a charitable donation, I certainly am interested, and that's why I attended the meeting. Uh, and now uh, the next step is for the Hartford Foundation liaison, plus several members of the folks that were at the meeting. Uh, to start to do organizational meetings, get the word out to people to see if they want to volunteer, and then eventually they'll identify a project or projects that they think would benefit the community. Uh, so it's it's all community driven, and then uh, that would be the fifty thousand dollars, which would be uh, eligible, you know, whenever the program is submitted and approved. Uh, and then uh, on a the fifty thousand dollars is controlled by the Hartford Foundation as the investment component of that. 
and, uh, and, and then the committee would get that every year. Uh, so they could wait two or three years until they collected three or four thousand dollars and do something with that, or they could spend it. You know, if they got a thousand dollars every year, they could make a thousand dollar, do a thousand dollar project or make a thousand dollar grant. So it's uh, it's a uh, sounds like a wonderful program by the Hartford Foundation, uh, and they're doing it in all 28 towns that they have coverage. Now, how long is it before they actually pick people? I mean, is there enough time to get this out, like in Let's Talk Turkey and everywhere else, so that whoever might be interested would find out about it? Or is this going to happen, like, in the next couple weeks or something? The, uh, I would imagine that the shorter answer is in the next couple weeks or the next month. Uh, we did get a lot of publicity out for the meeting, and it was in Let's Talk Turkey. Uh, we certainly, when we get more specific information, we can put it on the town website. Also, we have a town Facebook page now uh, that we uh, that, that we. It doesn't go to everyone. No, no, no. The uh, it's uh, but certainly it gets the, the word out, and there's other methods that we can do. Uh, I'm sure if um, you know because we're not going to have a let's talk turkey until January. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, that. Uh, as they're in the organizational area, as they're doing the organization, um, you know, if they get additional volunteers, I'm sure they'll be able to find them uh, about that. So we'll certainly get the word out as much as possible, but it may happen before the next Top Turkey, but there will be flexibility for people to volunteer. Uh, no, no volunteer will be turned away. So where do people go to volunteer? The, uh, at, at this point, they need to wait until the organizational meeting starts to happen where they start to set dates of when they're going to have specific meetings and when they're going to get the community uh, involved in it. So uh, it would be between now and the end of the year, but there's not a specific date yet. Okay, so the only way that people can find out about it is by going to the town website, and that will be updated as to if there's a meeting or... Well, the town website, the Facebook page, uh, there'll be uh, um, there'll, there'll be articles in patch, uh, uh, the electronic articles in patch. Uh, they'll also get something into the current. I mean, they'll they'll, they'll get it into a lot of different areas. <coughs> appointed the state's first chief manufacturing officer who will promote Connecticut manufacturing and its products, coordinate workforce development initiatives, help manufacturers leverage uh, advanced te technology, excuse me, ensure state programs are efficient and responsive to manufacturer needs, and make sure uh, that regulations are clear, consistent, and less burdensome. He, uh, his name is uh, Colin uh, Cooper, uh, and he is the former CEO of the Whitecraft Group, a well-respected leader in Connecticut's manufacturing sector, according to David Lehman, who is the uh, commissioner of uh, DECD, the Department of Economic Community Development. Sounds like a good news. It does. Uh, the, um, <coughs> just wanted to give you an update on Walnut Drive. Uh, the, uh, so where we are at this point is the uh, the state is handling, well, the Connecticut Air National Guard and the consultants are handling the design of, uh, of Walnut Drive, and they, they have 90, they're 90 percent complete uh, with the design, and um, our town uh, engineer and uh, community development director will give feedback. Uh, and um, the other thing that they're going to need is that uh, during construction, the current Walnut Drive will need to be closed, and that will, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll just put Jersey barriers up. Yeah, it's not going to really affect traffic or anything. Yeah, the, uh, there's seven or eight houses uh, on Walnut Drive in Windsor, 
and that you know, that may affect them to the fa well will affect them, but they can take a left eventually on Hemlock, go to Larch, uh, and come out by the 66 gas station. Or if they're going in the other direction, they can uh, go by the C uh, the Connecticut DOT garage, and they can certainly uh, um, exit that way. So it should be a minimal uh, uh, inconvenience for people. So I just want to let you know that it's. Uh, uh, Onward and upward. Have they drawn anywhere on here any mitigation things that they'll do for the few houses that are affected on? Uh, uh, we're still not as of yet, but we're still in that process. But the mitigation will be addressed. It'll be addressed one way or the other, whether it's we do it as a town or they right. do it in the project. But there will be some mitigation, and we presume it would be you know, a soft um, fence. You know, the you know, brush, uh, Tree, trees, brush, uh, yeah. and trees, or, or any other, you know, arbor beauty, something like that. Mm -hmm. that, one, that one. Uh, okay, and then there was one, uh, let's see, another one, the additional. Uh, it's a 6 no, no, It's a 6 C. Yeah. Uh, the uh, next. Uh, Order of business is the minutes from October 21st. Mm -hmm. Looks pretty short. I'll make a motion to approve. Second there. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No new information on tax incentives with the new year. We expect to work on that. School Town Building uh, Committee update. Uh, the uh, road project uh, is 50% uh, is complete on Newgate Road, uh, which means the first layer is down. Uh, for To help uh, maintain the integrity of the edges of the road, which had seriously eroded uh, because of the amount of water that there, curbing was put up on most of it. Uh, and, um, and so that should help with the drainage uh, and water. Uh, in the spring, there'll be um, additional drainage work that will be done with some culverts and things like that, and then the second culvert will go on. So uh, at this point, uh, uh, the curving should be 100% complete. Uh, two days ago, it was almost finished. Uh, and um, I believe, John, they, they put the lights, uh, the lights, the, uh, the lines down the middle. They the have the lines on the curbing. There's still sections that is not done yet. And I did notice. I mean, the curbing is pretty much the entire length of the road. It wasn't there before. It did kind of squeeze the road in because the curbs are about eight inches each. So you lost about a foot and a half of the width of the road. So um, actually, the um, I know they the curbing didn't. Well, what happened is, is you see the fully paved road. You, you, the road went like this, and yeah. so now it's it's straighter. Right. Uh, and the curbing actually, the the width of the road is is at standard, which would be uh, 24 or 26, yeah. 24, I think. Uh, and then the curbing is on the other side. So it, it, the curbing didn't encroach onto the roadway, but now that you have something that you didn't have, it certainly makes you feel yeah, like the road's narrower. Like the road's narrower. It really isn't. Yeah. Uh, in some areas it's wider, in some areas it's not wider where it was, you know, I'm making the number up, it was 28 feet and now it's 24 feet right. so that you have the uniformity and everything. Uh, just, it is a little transition for people to get used to. Right. No doubt about it. I'm just hoping that the snow plows don't clear it out the first year because it's, it's really hard to tell where the edge of that road is. The, uh, the, uh, uh, the snow plow uh, Folks uh, in that particular route. There's a one guy on that route, and he. Uh, I'm sure he will be. He'll learn the first time. <laughs> He'll be extremely. Good. He'll be plowing that black snow. And the other thing too is the curbing looks a little bit higher than than what it will be, John, because we've still got two more inches right. that we're going to be putting on, and that will also help with uh, people's uh, driveway aprons. So there's a little lip. Uh, you know, it could be as much as two inch lip uh, on the aprons at this point that eventually will go away. We're going to have Eddie inspect the curbs because some of the curbs were damaged, I guess, by trucks backing up, turning around. There was one, uh, the, the, the curvy truck was not 50 feet away when a woman backed out of her driveway, went across two lanes, and went right into the curb. That's what I saw. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was still soft, and you 
you just know, mowed it right down. And, and so, you know, all those, you know, all those sorts of things will be resolved, whether it's, it may not happen this year, be next year, but, uh, you know, the real big obvious ones will be taken care of. If it's a little skin, that's, that'll be there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the roofs, the uh, public safety roof is, uh, is probably 70% complete. Uh, the, it's similar to the way the roof was over at the Senior Community Center when the old uh, gutter system was taken down. The roof had needed to be extended out 18 inches right now. Mm, I'm not positive. But, but yeah, no. it, it, it came out. Uh, and so that's, that's happening there. Um, it's, you know, like I said, it's close to 70, 75 percent complete at this point. Uh, all the other uh, town roofs are complete with the exception of the ventilation which would be put in over at the um, South End Firehouse. And then uh, the school roof, uh, there's uh, you know, little things that need to be finished up at all group, but it's, it's essentially complete. Middle school, high school still got some work to do on it. We're, Still hopeful that by the end of November we'll be finished with the high school roof on the end of school roof and the project would be put to bed from, uh, from a roof perspective. So. Now the uh, senior community center, they still haven't put those ink strips up. No, uh, the, he, uh, it's on track. Uh, the um, what uh, they, they're well aware of it. Uh, I've reminded uh, our consultant, and he's talked to them several times. Uh, they um, they intend on going back and taking okay. care of it. Because I noticed that they did put it up on the uh, yeah. public safety complex. And they they bought enough of, of I'm told that they're going to buy enough of it so that they could be able to go back and redo it. Okay, okay so that's where we are there. Uh, next order of business is the fire department capital items. Uh, that we have talked about uh, part of the five-year plan and mentioned that there was two items that we would be coming back to the town on. One is the uh, is a sum on not to exceed forty-four thousand dollars for the uh, for the ATV vehicle. Uh, I'm sorry for the uh, extraction equipment. Uh, the total need uh, is about sixty thousand dollars. Uh, I, uh, I see that the Chief uh, uh, Flaherty is, is here. Chief, just uh, confirm uh, my statement uh, or disprove it. Uh, the, um, the intent at this point is for the volunteer fire department to, uh, at this point, uh, with their fundraising and everything that they've done over the years, they're looking to fill the difference between what the town will do as a capital purchase and the total amount, which will include the extraction equipment uh, and uh, the uh, high pressure lift bags. And basically, uh, it would be uh, roughly about $16,000 that the volunteer fire department is considering as putting a little skin in the game here to help uh, uh, get, the, where, get their equipment where it needs to be. Also, it's reflective of the community support over the years with poinsettias and Christmas trees and other donations that allow them to have discretionary money like this that the, the volunteers can decide what to do with. Is that accurate? That's extremely accurate, yes. Okay. And where are the numbers of these? Where's the 16,000 that they're using? We're only we're we're, uh, we're the total is sixty thousand two hundred thirty eight thousand uh, dollars. We sixty thousand two hundred thirty eight dollars. We are going to uh, at this uh, juncture, if we go forward with this, is provide forty four thousand dollars. So or forty five. Well, I mean the plan calls for forty four. Okay. So so the rest comes from donations from that the fire department received. Correct. The standard fundraising methods that the fire department use would be used to offset a deficiency in full purchase okay. price. So it's not additional funds that the town's putting in, it's the fire department's putting it in on their own. Correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. For 60,000 minus 16 equals 44. Okay. And the, the five year plan is 44,000. Uh, and then the second item is the. Uh, is the ATV, um, and uh, by the way, both 
the extraction equipment and the ATV are on the uh, state VIP bid list, which is why there's only one document that shows what the prices are because it's on the, uh, the uh, Department of Administrative Services uh, VIP bidder list. The second purchase would be the ATV. Uh, roughly half of the $25,000 would be uh, the ATV itself, and the remainder would be the equipment, uh, which would be uh, to, uh, uh, for a combination brush fire rescue unit. So in this particular case, uh, it would be a water reservoir, it would be other equipment. Uh, the reservoir itself, I think, is $8,000. So they, these are uh, not insignificant costs, uh, but uh, uh, so it's not $25,000 just for an ATV, it's $25,000 to equip for a need, uh, which is for brush and fire rescue unit. As in one of our meetings, it was mentioned that uh, the ATV would, is uh, very helpful with uh, uh, transporting uh, uh, up specific terrain uh, the firefighters so that they, when they get there, they're able to react immediately to whatever the specific need is, whether it's a brush fire or if it's someone that's lost that is uh, having, having some kind of a medical emergency or something like that. This would be used uh, uh, on the ridge, well, it be used wherever it needs to be used, but it'd be used on the ridge uh, specifically. Could even be used in the gorge if you had to get to areas that uh, were uh, uh, difficult to get to. And uh, we have you know, we, we had a presentation from the fire department on this uh, previously, and we've discussed it in the five year plan. Chief. In, if I just may, I put an additional piece of perspective. The fire company is also disposing of equipment owned in whole by the fire company to purchase the trailer that the ATV slash brush fire rescue unit is going to be uh, mobilized with. Now, uh, just because I want to make sure I'm doing my due diligence on that, uh, the, that is not equipment that has been purchased by the town. That's correct. This is equipment or property that was owned by the volunteer fire department. There was a piece of property that uh, the volunteer fire department recently sold. That is correct. I got one question. Do you, do you guys have a place to store this once we purchase it? Yes, sir. It's going to go at the center station. As you look at the center station, all the way to the left side. So you'll see the new UT, Utility Vehicle 6, i.e. pickup, is in that bay right now. Okay. So that trailer and unit will be placed strategically behind that so that it can be hooked up and proceed to the site of any incident or emergency on short notice. Okay. I also like to, uh, I, Thank you that you didn't purchase like the top of the line model. You purchased just what's, or looking to purchase just what's necessary. Needed, yeah. And certainly, we understand all the concerns. And the uh, the the chief uh, and the fire department themselves, uh, but the chief uh, has a committee that does uh, an apparatus. Uh, committee that does the research on it. Is, uh, both purchases were extremely well researched uh, and I certainly thank the volunteers, whether it's Captain Moran or, or, or uh, Trevor Kelly, uh, who uh, were very instrumental in providing us with all the information that we need so that we can make an appropriate recommendation to the town. So thank you, Chief. Thank you. Well, any other questions? Yeah, uh, just before we move on, in raising the funds, to offset the additional expense. If you can just quickly run through what it is that the fire department will be offering during the holiday season. So I think everybody's familiar with the Christmas tree sales. And then in addition to the Christmas tree sales, we sell kissing balls and wreaths. I think this year we're selling approximately 300 Christmas trees. Um, I'm not in charge of that, so I'm talking in generalization if we need our numbers, we can do that. So that generates a sum of X. And then I think the mailers for the poinsettias went out this week. Mm -hmm. And that generates another sum of money. And I think on that mailer, 
it very explicitly explains that these funds are used to support the projects of the fire department were structured as a nonprofit, that none of those funds can be spent on firefighters or any of that, that that money in turn has to be spent on supporting the projects directly related to fire protection, fire prevention, and fire education in the town of East Grand. And last year, if I recall, you purchased some items as well. Yeah, so last year, and I have to, why it's on my mind, December 16th is the Fire Chief's Christmas party that all three selectmen are going to be invited to. Uh, the paperwork, the paper invitations will be in the mail. So for instance, we donated $24,000 worth of thermal imaging cameras uh, to the town and those cameras would be used not only in fire situations, but we were poised to be deployed to the lost person uh, incident that we had on the Canal Trail last year because of the resolution of a heat signature. And one of the reasons why you mentioned that is because at the Chief's Christmas party, uh, the equipment was physically rolled out so people could see, uh, the firefighters could see what the equipment was and all the different guests that were there also. So um, look forward to uh, December 16th uh, and attending uh, the Chief's Christmas party uh, where it's a great time for all and it's the volunteers and their families and it's a nice event. Thank you. And, and this here, in it's secret right up to the 16th, of the groups that we honor um, at those parties for community service and then duty certainly above and beyond uh, the normal call of duty. This is mostly for firefighters in, in the firefighters. Firefighters, their families. Okay. Last year we recognized ambulance members and police members for, and public works on how we all interrelated together for emergency services you know throughout the town for that year and we're going to do that again this year december 16th 1800 hours we're going to eat first and then talk after sure. sounds like a good sequence there yeah. thank you <laughs> okay uh, so our next uh, order of business would be to uh, uh, make a motion on uh, the two purchases separately uh, to you uh, for Board of Finance consideration and um, town meeting consideration. Happy to make that motion. So the first one would be a sum not to exceed $44,000 to purchase uh, emergency extraction equipment. Is that on this plan here? Yeah, uh, yeah, John. Uh, to go, um, in 1920, uh, and then you go to 1920, uh, I see the 18. Here it is, Homatro Tools. So you, it's a, so you see where my pen is. So you, if you go, okay, I'm not in, so you're at engine two body at the end, and you work up apparatus data ports, hose replacement, Homatro Tools. So those are the, extract, that is the extraction equipment. We got $44,000 in this year's plan. All right, so we're, we're mo motioning for the 44000 and an additional line item, or which one? Well, that would be just the first one. one, and then the second motion would be the UTV. And the UTV is, uh, if you go up a couple more from there, four more up there, you see the 25. Yeah. That's easier to see. That's a little isolated. The other one right. kind of blends out. All right, I'll second the amount of tools. Okay. Any further questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, the next uh, would be the item of a sum not to exceed 20, uh, and by the way, I mean, it is for BOF and town meeting consideration. I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second that for the, I got okay. Okay. comment. I, I think something like that ATV would be great for the, uh, the Hartford Foundation to make, or someone to consider that. 
the or, uh, the the um, well. For, I mean, would that fit into? It, it doesn't fit into the criteria that they have at this point because they don't want to supplant what they think is is government function. They would see they would see equipment as something that would be a, a function of government to provide. So they're looking for for other things than that. But who knows? Because it's like you know. We've never had an ATV like this before, so it's something new. It's, it's for the general good of everyone. Um, I, I would kind of think that that would be the be one of the best uses for it. I wonder if you know, that's one of the reasons why they have that committee that will be making these decisions. And, uh, well, we don't even have that committee. No, but eventually that's who will be making the decision. Yeah, the, uh, you know, certainly uh, if you can, you know, leverage or use other funds for things, I mean, we certainly want to do that. In this particular case, I, uh, based on the two meetings that I've attended, uh, an item like that would not probably be considered by uh, the Hartford Foundation as something appropriate. Um, but, you know, that's... You know, putting the car before the horse. I mean, that's six months or eight months uh, sure. before before that can that can happen. Um, sure. And I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not like I said. I, I don't think that they would uh, uh, look favorably on that. But I don't know. I, you know, I, 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 I won't put words in, in their mouth. Right. But it's also the committee might not look that's favorably. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's not just the Harvard no Foundation. No influence, and elected officials can't be part of that committee either. So. It really would be something that would be up to them. So, uh, just so that I've got this right, Joe, you made the motion for uh, some not to exceed twenty-five thousand to purchase and equip the UTV and accessories. John, did I hear you say you yeah, seconded that? Yeah, I did second that okay. before we got into that discussion. Okay. I just want to be sure that. Okay. And so we uh, and you know both of these items that we're talking about tonight are in our this year of the five-year plan. And this year we're balanced. Yes, sir. We are balanced for the entire the entire five years, and this will be will be uh, the five year plan will be under consideration by the board of finance at their meeting next week. Uh, but uh, you know this five this this year the plan um, is most of the items they've seen before. All right, uh, any other comments before we move to vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so it's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Uh, next order of business is the tax refunds. And the tax refunds are Seven hundred sixty-one dollars uh, for a, uh, a active duty uh, soldier. Uh, so when you're active duty, you don't pay car tax. Uh, Two hundred fifty-five dollars, uh, two hundred fourteen dollars, and twenty-nine dollars and twenty-six cents. And the um, they're all the other three are pretty normal. Car refunds, and then the the last one was a board of uh, assessment appeals reduction. That's the twenty nine dollar one. Yes, sir. Motion to the refunds. Refunds. Four four refunds. Four refunds. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Uh, John, would you like to make a motion to add uh, six C appointments? Uh, I'll make a motion to add six C appointments. And I'll second that since Joe's going to be the subject of that. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, so that's unanimous. And then the appointment it would be to um, the uh, Central Connecticut Solid Waste Authority, of which East Granby is a member. Uh, the uh, representative was uh, Dave Kilbon. Dave Kilbon retired in June. Uh, these are quarterly meetings, um, and uh, uh, 
I asked Selectman <laughs> Doreen if he was available for four meetings a year on the uh, Central Solid Waste Authority. Uh, that's something that normally I would, uh, would be on, but I'm on the MIRA uh, um, board, and the MIRA board would be uh, a conflict of interest with this. So uh, since this is actually looking at the same thing, but it's it's more it's an independent look at what would be uh, effective and efficient for uh, future disposal of trash. So we we started this uh, six years ago or seven years maybe eight years ago. Um, uh, Central Connecticut Solid Waste Authority because uh, Mira, uh, which was CRRA at the time, was going through a process of where there was going to be uh, a new uh, municipal services agreement after the 30 years expired from the previous one. And this was uh, towns working to share services together so that they didn't all have to do all the same due diligence. And we, we uh, averaged out the cost and it was a fit, uh, you know, certainly it was uh, effective and efficient and an early example of shared services. So uh, that's what the Central uh, Connecticut Solid Waste Authority is. Uh, and uh, certainly if you'd like to make a motion to uh, appoint Joe. So, so we got a Joe as a volunteer. Joe as a volunteer. All right, Joe. I, I'd like to appoint you as a, a member of the as CCSWA. The East Creamy representative of the CCSWA. Perfect. Now, does his term expire the, uh, immediately actually, after him? He probably won't even get to go to a meeting. <laughs> well, the uh, actually he will have an opportunity to go to a meeting. Okay. Uh, the, uh, and what I would suggest that we do is we uh, make the appointment from November 13th, 2019 uh, to January 31st, 2021. So that would cover the two years and two months. Okay, because this is a two-year term? Yeah. Okay. And also, we're, that's when you know, the following week is when the current, the new Board of Selectmen would expire because it's, it would be an election year. Okay. Make that amended motion. Okay. And I'll second that. Joe, just make sure our trash fees don't go up. <laughs> I don't know. Joe's got Joe's got power, but I don't know if he's got that much power. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And uh, Joe, is that an abstention? <laughs> Okay, next order of business is executive session if needed, or we don't need it. So there is no except, uh, 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 there is no executive session. Uh, next after that would be public comments. Is there any public comments? Hearing none, there is there a motion to join? Okay. Second. At 7.17. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Thank you very much.